So hi, I'm Chris Greeley. I'm the global head for League of Legends Esports. Uh, I work to make sure that uh, all over the world we're delivering kind of the best experience around League Esports to our fans, whether it's at international events or working with our regional leads in each of our five regions uh, for their, their domestic leads. I gotta tell you, like, there is a reason that we wanted to bring quarters and semis to, to France. Like, six full days of that crowd was just absolutely off the charts. Uh, I thought the bin entrance was awesome. Turns out that the, uh, the woman who caught the jacket came back the next day and found Bin, who was watching the game, and he signed it for her, which was also super cool, like, great fan experience. Uh, but overall, like, couldn't ask for more uh, from a host city than we got from Paris. Like. Uh, arena was sold out, fans were incredibly loud, the city of Paris, the, the actual officials in the city were very welcoming, very gracious, helped us uh, pull off a lot of great parts for the show. So like overall we were just so excited with the, with the experience we had. Fans really enjoy being able to watch uh, League of Legends esports with their favorite streamers. So like whether it's Ibai or Kadrill or Kamado, like there's just so many amazing co-streamers all over the world. Uh, and if that's the broadcast experience that fans want, like we kind of want to meet fans where they are and where they want to be. Um, I, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think it's something you'll see continue to grow. Part of the challenge for us is making sure that we kind of find the right mix of co-streamers to be able to deliver uh, to fans. Like we want to find co-streamers who not only want to want to co-stream our games, but that fans want to see co-stream. So I think you'll, you'll see that program continue to grow and mature uh, as we go forward but you know we're, we're just so happy with the fan reaction and what great partners all of our, our influencers and co-streamers have been. I, I don't see a danger to it you know it's been around for quite a while and we, we definitely see it in other Riot Esports like Valorant. I think the uh, main broadcast continues to be incredibly strong not, not just at the international level but across our regions. I think there's a lot of uh, hosts and casters and play-by-play -play on those uh, broadcasts that fans still want to tune into every week and see, uh, myself included. I watch, I watch a lot of, the, of our official broadcast, not because it's a Riot broadcast, but because I just simply enjoy our casters and play-by-play -play and folks and analyst desk. Uh, so I think that it's important to be able to give fans a variety. Uh, if there are fans who would never tune in for the official broadcast and they'll watch a co-stream, that is a fan that we otherwise wouldn't have watching our show, who's now watching the show. And I think there's a lot of fans who just aren't interested in watching a co-streamer and would rather watch the official broadcast and the personalities that they know. And for them, we're going to continue to produce the best product that we can. <laughs> there's nothing in the bowl. So it, it's, uh, it was interesting. I was, I was at the studio in Berlin when it happened. I was sitting backstage with the team. Um, Look, I don't think anyone wanted that ball to open and be empty. Um, you know, backstage we made a mistake. Uh, we immediately uh, put a new process in place to make sure that that error couldn't happen again. The rest of the draw shows were flawless. Uh, I think that as we go forward, we're going to continue. I, I think the draw show, personally, is the best part of Swiss. Um, the, like, I'm more nervous uh, in those like five minutes where they're drawing the matchups and you get to see like, hey, uh, are we finally gonna get that LEC, LCS match? Are we gonna get to see like uh, a great LPL, LCK match? Um, I, I think that we wanna spend some time looking at how the draw shows work um, and kind of what, what they look like in the future uh, and find some ways to make them feel even better than they do today. So I look, Sometimes issues are going to happen. I don't think it infected. Uh, I don't think it affected the uh, competitive integrity of the event. We rebounded from it quickly, and I think we're going to make some really great, or we're going to look to make some really great changes to the draw show going forward to make it feel even more exciting. Yeah, I, look, I do like some of the randomness uh, of the draw show. Like, I think it does add some excitement. Uh, I think uh, ranking teams in League of Legends is hard. I think that. Uh, we have a partnership with AWS. They, they have power rankings. Uh, I, I think those have actually been really cool uh, and a really great uh, conversation starter from fans. Like, one point G2 was the number five team uh, in the world according to the power rankings. Like, do you think it's true? Do you think it's not? Like, let's have some conversations about that. So we've talked about, like, what does that look like as the basis of seeding? Um, past that, it's, it's really difficult, right? You don't, the question is, like, is the, 
like, and, and I've seen a lot of fans talk about it, is the number one seed from the LCS or the LEC equivalent to the number one seed from the LCK or LPL. How do you do that weighting? You know, this is the second time uh, we have a number four seed in the finals, both from the LCK. So trying to use those relative rankings uh, to create a draw system, I think, leads to more problems than it solves. But we're going to continue to look at ways that maybe we can use the power rankings to set some, some kind of seating or, or ranking up to make the draw feel better in the future. Yeah, so I look, I think it, uh, at one point we were at like 117 teams across 12 different leagues across the world. It's a lot of teams. Um, we grew really fast. We wanted to be everywhere players were. And then I think at some point um, when you talk to teams and we, you know, we kind of look at our own financials, it is unsustainable to have an eSport even, uh, so by the numbers, we're the number one eSport in the world, at least from every number I've seen. Um, we were not big enough to support 117 teams to the point where they could all make money and everyone could run a business, including us. Uh, I think getting down to the roughly 60 teams we anticipate being next year, 65, 65 teams, uh, it puts us in a much more sustainable place going forward. Uh, I think it allows us to run, to like take the money that we have to run esports and put it to the best uses for fans. I think it allows the teams that are in the ecosystem to have the best chance to uh, talk to sponsors, to make money. You know, you saw in the uh, LCK last year, T1 ran a home ground event where they were able to actually run a day of the LCK. I don't know if you saw Max Schmidt's announcement for the LEC that they're looking to do LEC on the road. Having less teams and less leagues allows us to spend uh, more time and resources investing in things like that that we think will be great for players. So overall, like, I think the ecosystem has gotten to a really good size and a really good point so that we can make sure that League of Legends esports, you know, and we're celebrating our 15th year next year. Like our goal is to be uh, celebrating our 30th year down the road because of the sustainability changes we've made now. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we've seen a lot of our leagues go to go to 18. Um, and I know that uh, there were some folks in NA, like uh, uh, General Sniper, who was the top laner for 100 Thieves, had the same issue when he was coming up, that he was age-gated from being able to join the Tier 1 league. Uh, I think that uh, having players who are at a, at a minimum of 18 does open up more sponsorship opportunities for the league uh, and for teams. Um, as to the specifics of the LEC rule, like I... I Never like to say, go ask someone else, but uh, I think Max or Artem would be a better, uh, be able to give you a more direct answer than I could about the LEC's rules specifically. But I know globally there are a lot of leagues uh, at 18. I think all of them may be, four of them may be. Um, so I think it's, uh, it is a trend as we move forward, um, mainly around the, the sponsorship angle. Yeah, I, look, I, I, uh, I think we looked at names, you know, that were more descriptive and less fun. So season kickoff event, um, we had looked at uh, lock-in, which had been used in Valorant and used in the LCS. Uh, we had a we had a lot of names that just sort of never made it never made it off the board. Um, I look, I think branding and naming are hard. The first time you see most things, you don't like it. I remember uh, lots of names that we have released for things that people are like, I don't like that. And then six months later, everyone is used to it and it is just the name. So uh, with all the choices we had in front of us, we, we really liked First Stand. We thought it kind of stood for what we want this event to be, which is really your first opportunity to see international competition. It is the first stand for these teams in kind of the onslaught of competition that's to come. Um, we think fans are going to grow to love the, the naming and the branding. Um, and we're just, you know, we're really excited for the event and everything that it's going to bring.